Today we're going to talk about one of the main principles at the Toronto FC Academy that we work with on a regular basis. It's called playing across the direct game channel. You may know this as switching the point of attack. We look at it with a very clear reference point, which I'll explain during the course of the session. Okay, so this is an attacking principle that we want to see today. The methodology that we're going to use, there's going to be three segments of training. We'll start with a discovery game in here. We'll start with a five versus five game using four goals. We'll transition to a technical exercise, and then we'll finish with a tactical situation. And I'll try to give as much information as I can about each of the segments, okay? So we'll get started with the discovery game in here. So I'll work with the players a little bit. The orange team will look to attack in this direction here. Your objective is to score in that goal or that goal, okay? The restarts will come from the goalkeeper. So you'll start the action with the feet to play into orange. Green team will do the opposite. You'll attack this way. There's a goal there for you and a goal there for you to score in, okay? Restarts will come from the goalkeeper here. If you score a goal, if you score a goal, you're ready to defend. The next ball would come in here if the green team were to score there. Yes? Are there any questions? No? Let's play from here. Orange. Yes? Good, so just for the coaches in the audience as we're watching this game here. So because I started with a discovery game, one of the biggest features of the discovery game is making sure that I have the correct spacing, so the layout. So hopefully we've gotten that right. We don't want to waste too much time trying to shuffle cones around, but that's one of the things that we need to get right when we talk about discovery games. Could you imagine playing this game with less width and more length? So because our principle is playing a to make sure that we have enough width in the game so that we get the actions we're looking for. If the field were more narrow and long, this would turn into more of a transition game going north-south. It's not what we're looking for today. So the layout of the field. Start from the keeper. As we're watching this game now, I want you to consider what you just saw there, the amount of pressure that is on the ball. Okay, so how much pressure is on the ball? And by the same token, how much time does the player on the ball actually have in the game? We'll see. So here the ball is circulating. We're looking for the defending team to press. Good. Okay, so we'll freeze this moment here so everyone can see what we're talking about. Just go back where you were. And the player get on the ball. Who's on the ball? Yeah. Just go back where you were. Perfect. Take a couple steps back. Okay. So because I'm working on an attacking principle here, as a coach, I control what we call the balance of power in this training session right now. Right now, we're working on an attacking principle to play across the direct game channel. That is not going to happen as many times as I would like it to happen based on the setup of the game right now. We're playing even numbers, five versus five. And now the question is, how much time does the player on the ball have? So we just saw an example here of this player receiving the ball and across here. Go back and give it there, please. Just drop off where you were, the defender, and I want you to do exactly what you just did and we'll freeze it when he touches the ball. Okay, good. And stop. Watch the body language of the player receiving the ball. As the ball's traveling, there's a defender that's ready to press him. So as he's touching the ball, his head goes down and he's not able to survey the field. He's not able to process any information because of the amount of pressure on the ball. If we were to let this game flow five versus five, you would see a number of duels taking place where balls get played in and immediately there's pressure on the player receiving. This is what we don't want in this particular session. What I need to do now as a coach is try to tip the balance of power in my favor, which is on the attacking side. And now I'm going to ask Connor to come into this game, and we're going to introduce a neutral player. Now, this is not a random act here because we have an extra player that we're just putting him into the game. There's a reason why we're doing this. It's to try to give the possession a little bit more time on the ball so they can try to set up a purposeful action. So we don't see what we just saw over here, okay? So Connor will play with both teams in possession to create a plus one. Any questions? Keep it back here. And play. Yes, 
Next ball. Comes in from the keeper. Okay, so just hold it there. Just stay where you are, Connor. Stay where you are. As part of the methodology that I'm going to be using here in the discovery game, it's question and answer to try to draw information out of the players. There's no real direct instruction happening here. So give the ball back to the goalkeeper. Good. I'll just ask you, as the neutral player, because maybe you'll have more time and space, where can you position yourself on the field to be very effective here in possession? Here? In the middle of the field? Can you show us what that looks like? What? Next ball in. So there's an example of using the neutral player to then find another player with who's able to execute an action. So what we've done here is we've given more time to the attacking team, which is what we wanted for this principle. But this is not enough right now in terms of balance of power. Still not what I'm looking for. So now I need to give the players a very clear reference point. Because as they're playing the game right now, the only reference points that they have are the two goals which represent direct game channels. But I'm going to manipulate this game even further now. There, guys. Okay. I'm going to use two flat markers only. Okay, and I'm going to place them right through the middle of the field. There's one there. We'll use this center marker as well as a reference, and we'll put this one here. Okay. So what I've done here is I've divided the field into two halves using two cones only. Okay, and I'm going to implement a rule here, again, to get the behavior that I'm looking for out of the players, particularly in possession. So the ball goes to the goalkeeper. We're going to start from here. And the rule for the game is this, very simple. If the ball comes on the right side of the playing area, so if you're able to play the ball to this player here, orange team is attacking this way, yes? If we're able to score in this goal, so when it comes on the right side, the strong side goal is worth two points, okay? The exact same thing if it's the goalkeeper starting the action and we play out this way, yeah, the goal on the strong side is going to be worth two. Any questions? Play it back to the keeper. Hey! Good. So, it, what was interesting, I don't know if you could hear it from up there, but as soon as the goalkeeper played the ball, a player here shouted, shift, shift, shift. Maybe you heard it up there. There was a player here. Okay. I didn't say anything to the defenders about compactness. I didn't tell the defenders to shift. I didn't tell them that they had to be close together. All I did was implement a rule into the game that says if they score on the strong side goal, it's worth two. This is part of my performance criteria as a coach. I'm using this rule to influence behavior now, and specifically my defenders. Ball comes in here, it's worth two. Look at the behavior of these defenders. Perfect. And we'll just watch the game a little bit here. Already you're starting to see passes across density. We haven't even talked about the topic of the session yet, but the players are doing it themselves. Based on the layout of the field, the conditions that I'm putting in, the rules that I'm implementing in the game. But it's still not enough. I'm still not happy with this as a coach. And I'm going to really tip the balance of power in my favor. Back to the goalkeeper to start. We understand the rule. Yes, we talked about the first one. We're going to implement a constraint now, and this is for the defending team, okay, for the defending team. If the ball is played to the right side of the halfway line, there must be four defenders from the defending team in this half. What does that look like? Show us. Excellent. So this is your the halfway line, yes? You can only have one defender in the opposite half of the field every time the restart comes from the keeper, but also in the flow of the game. Which means if you decide, get to me, and we're going to look to play off this side, 
Yeah? The defenders have to abide by the same rule. So it goes there. Show me what you would do. Perfect. And now I have an assistant coach who's actually traveled with me, Johnny. His responsibility is to make sure that this constraint is used and enforced by the defending team. Yes? And Johnny will make sure that that happens from there. Give it to me. Ready? And play. Next ball. Next ball. So I want you to watch the, the behavior of the defenders right now, the green team. Through the use of rules and constraints, defenders are naturally creating density in the direct game channel every time there's a restart. Next ball. Let's see. Perfect. Where do you need to be? Okay, moment here. Let's go back to this moment here. So what we've done, the conditions have been created, again, through the rules I've implemented, everything that I've done. Everyone go back to where you were, the current team. And who's on the ball? Perfect. Get on the ball again. Go and defend where you were. So now we can start talking about methodology here. A little bit now about what I'm going to ask of the player here, based on what we're seeing. Okay, so you got possession of the ball. What do you see in front of you? Huh? You see the goal in front of you. What else do you see in front of you? Three defenders that are in front of you. Here's the thing with youth football, particularly when we talk about this principle. The player is more interested in where the ball is rather than where the ball needs to be. This is the concept we're trying to get out. Do you think that this is a good opportunity to try to score on this goal? No. Why not? So the defenders have created density through the direct game channel. Now we're talking about the principle of play. Where do you want to score the goal? On the opposite side. So now I'm going to ask the team in possession, how can you position yourself in such a way that we're ready to attack the opposite side? Let's see what this looks like. Okay. So we're stepping away from the defender. Do you see a clear and safe passing lane to one of your players? Yeah. Who? Perfect. If you receive this ball, where would the next pass go? Okay. So we're going to see this live now. When he touches the ball, the defending team is live. Remember the constraint, Johnny, yeah? Remember the constraint. Ready? Good. So there's a pass across the density. And now we'll see what they do with it. Okay. Play on. The question now for the coaches in the audience, have you noticed a change in behavior of the players while this game is going on? Maybe, maybe not. That depends on my expertise as a coach to see how many times I can get this ball across. And there's a great decision there. And I'm just going to stop it because this is the player I was coaching before. Give it back here. Give it back here. And my question for you is very simple. Why did you decide? Why did you decide to change your idea? from what you were doing to something different. We had pressure on our attack, and that's why we attacked the third. So if I switched it, we had more play. So he said, if we were able to play across, we would find more space on the opposite side. You're absolutely right. Give it to me, and do exactly what you did. Play. Yeah. Good. OK. And can we look to finish? Ooh, OK, good defending. Next ball. Next ball. Wait. Two points if he scores. Two points. It's two. Okay, so now I need to see how competitive defenders are because we can't forget the rule to start the game. So I might reference this again. Remember, there's a rule in the game that says if he plays the ball here and scores on that goal, you're giving up two points. How competitive are you? Is this a competitive group? You're going to let them score two. No, you're not. Play. Good. Where's the space? Excellent. Excellent. Well done. Game's live. Game's live. Game's live. Play. Okay, and stop, and stop. They, they've understood the game. They're understanding the concept here of density 
and not being able to play. Now we've got to start asking some more sophisticated questions of the players in possession of the game here. Let's see. Let's see. What can we do? I'm talking to the team. What can we do to make sure that those four defenders get right across the halfway line? I'm talking about in terms of the tempo of the game. What do you think? So the answer is maybe, maybe we hold it a little bit or slow down the tempo of the game to make sure that everybody is fixed on this side. So this is what we talk about when we say fixing defenders on one half of the field. We control that with the tempo of the game. So if we slow down the tempo, it's going to ensure that everyone comes across and then where will the space be? On the opposite side. We understand this? Okay, it's me. Ready. And play. Good. Next ball. Next ball. Two points if he scores. It's worth two. Good. And the defenders are doing what I need done, again, to bring out the attacking principle without me having to coach the defenders. Constraints and rules to manipulate the balance of power here. Neutral player, more time and space. We're able to play across. If we were to look at this training session with the video after the fact, we would count the number of times the ball crosses this halfway line and how effective we are in being able to play across the deck. Here's an example here. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so what you saw there, the example of the player playing across the direct game channel into this player now that had a numbers advantage. So it was a two versus one situation against the fullback there, but we lost what we call the time edge. The lost. We created the advantage by playing across to a player with time and space, two versus one. And if you're watching this from up there, you might say he, he killed the time edge with his dribble. So he was dribbling slowly across the field, which allowed the defenders to come across and now create density in the game channel there. What we want to be able to do is create the time edge as quickly as possible and then capitalize on it. Does it make sense? Yes? Okay, here. Let's play. Keeper. Live. Good. Can you finish? Finish quickly. Okay, next one. Two points. Good. Excellent. Keep playing. Next ball. We got two balls in. Here, start from here. Green ball. Play. Worth two. Good. You heard the defender shout, get over, get over. I didn't say anything to the defending team. Excellent. And finish. All right. So it seems like the players are progressing, which means we need to make the game even more difficult now. So when the ball comes in from the goalkeeper, the team in possession, the opposite keeper on this side can come right across, and you can now look to block the goal without the, without the ball. Okay? So you go across, try to defend the goal. If they play across density and try to attack that goal, you're doing the opposite now. You're coming right across trying to defend, and you can use your hands. Now we're going to see the team in possession, what kind of decision making they have, and their ability to read the game effectively. Yes? Let's play. You can go cover that goal there. Good. Look at the density that's been created. Okay. Perfect. Well done. Excellent decision. Good. Because this is a discovery game, again, the methodology that we're using, I should not be in here. I know for the we intervened a little bit too much in here, but what I need to be doing is standing on the sideline here, actively observing the game with my hands behind my back. This is a 20-minute segment here 
15 or 16 of these minutes are active play. Right now, the teacher is the game. It's not me. I'm acting as a facilitator here, but they're engaged. It's their learning that's happening right now in this game. Hopefully the conditions have been set up in such a way where this action of a ball coming across the halfway line repeats itself over and over. Where's the space? Good. Well done. Can we capitalize on the moment quickly? Capitalize quickly. Quickly. Can you? <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Get yourself a quick sip. Johnny, get them organized here. Okay. So what you saw there was an example of a discovery game that we would use in the academy. Again, in terms of my behavior as a coach, I'm acting as a facilitator. I'm trying to engage the players as much as possible with questions and answers. There's no direct instruction that should be given. There's a high amount of active play. As I said, 20 minutes. If we're looking at the segment for 20 minutes, 15 or 16 of those minutes, the players are moving. I'm not stopping the action. I'm not trying to intervene. Again, my ability as a coach, based on the rules and constraints that I've put into the game, how do I tip the balance of power in my favor? What we tried to do there was tip it in the favor of the attacking team so that we see the repetitions that we need. That was the example of the discovery game. We're going to move into a technical phase now. So when we talk about technique in the academy, especially at the older ages, when we start talking 15, 16, 17, we have to talk about technique in terms of cues. So what are the players reading and what type of decision are they making based off of the cue that they're looking at? So what we don't want to do is set up a mechanical pattern where it's the same thing over and over and over where there's no decision, no choice, no reading of cues. This is what we don't want to do. So I'm going to show you an example of how we would organize a technical exercise based on the same principle of play, playing across the direct game channel. Okay. So here's how we'll start the action. Goalkeeper, ball, come on. You're going to start the action. Foot on the ball. So we'll start with the green team. We've got two teams that are working at the same time, one resting, one working, and we alternate. So greens will look to advance the ball this way to try to finish on one of the two goals on the far side, okay? So if I'm you for one second, we're going to start with eye contact with the goalkeeper, foot on the ball, foot on the ball, you're going to roll it out of your feet. When I've got eye contact, I'm going to look here. you're going to look to play the ball into my left foot, yeah? Play, play, good. So the ball comes into me, I take a touch with my left foot. I'm looking to go forward, it's not on, now I'm cutting the ball back this way. And I'm looking opposite now to my partner on that side. As I'm cutting the ball, you're giving me an angle, and I'm looking to play this ball into your right foot. Okay, stop there. As the ball travels, to me, you're starting in a high position on this side of the field, yes? As it travels across to this player, you're coming in here on the half turn, so you can play it into his right foot, okay? Perfect. Stop there, give it back. Central midfield player now. We're watching the cues, right? You're high and showing to the ball. As it travels there, yes, come on. I'm coming into this position, opening up my body so that you can play it into my left foot. And I'm taking a touch here. As the ball travels to me, I want this player in the gap now. Perfect. So we're looking to play opposite in between those two mannequins. Can you orientate your body so that we're looking to play forward? Perfect. And can I look to get this ball into the left foot? Touch and pass into that goal there. Perfect. Okay? The next group will have the ball come out this way to the orange team as soon as he touches the ball. The orange team will play the exact same pattern. Receive, across, straight ball between the lines, set, opposite side. Any questions? Yes? Play. Okay. Perfect. Us. Get ready with the next ball. Get ready with the next ball for orange. Okay, here we go, here we go. So here we're watching the movements of the players. We're watching the contact that's being made with the ball. We want to be oriented in this phase of the training, in the technical. This is the opposite of what you saw in the discovery game, right? Okay, so there's a break down there. Go back, go back. So we're going to talk about this player here, because we saw the mistake that was made. Ball gets played there, yes? 
We're coming forward. It's not on. Within three touches, we're playing across. Player comes to receive the ball there. Good. I'm starting in a high position here. We're setting, and all of a sudden, coming into this gap here to be able to receive and pass there. Okay? So your movement here is important. Yeah? Let's play. Good. Get ready with the next ball. Goalkeeper. Yes, next one. Excellent. Touch and play. Go to the right side now. Very good. Drive. Good. And stop. Okay. So we're going to go two repetitions this way and then two repetitions that way. Okay, that's my fault. I didn't tell you. Okay? That pass again that just went across. So it goes to this defender. He drives. Yep. Within three touches, stop. Okay, so now we want to look to create a good angle, but your goalkeeper is there already. So where can you be? Perfect. So this way, and step there so there's a good passing angle into your left foot. And you play a firm pass in, touch forward. Good, and play. Next ball, goes. Good. Let's see, can we drive forward? Perfect. Okay. Set, can we play across? Can we play across? Good. So we want a high number of repetitions here. The analogy that we do as a tennis player knocking a ball against the wall, how many repetitions can we get? But we want high quality repetitions, like we talked about. The technical execution needs to be at a high level. Attention to detail. We could be stopping this to demonstrate, to show. In the interest of time, we'll let it flow a little bit here. Good. We come across. Okay, get that ball down. Make sure it's flat along the ground, nice and firm. Good. Firm across. Well done. Good. Drive. Okay. Good. Last one. Excellent. Touch. And play. Good. Good movement from the midfielder. And play, play. Go to the opposite side. Hold it there. Good. Okay. So what you just saw here is a mechanical pattern, what we said at the beginning. The same thing repeating itself over and over. Now we got to start talking about cues. So the players that are going to offer the cues are the players in the back here. Okay. So we need to pay attention. We're going to give you choices. Based on what we do, it's going to influence the movement of the players in front of us, okay? So what we saw is the ball go out this way. We take a It comes back here, good. The first option was to take a touch out of the foot and look to play this player. Now what we're gonna suggest is this player can receive the ball and start to dribble past the mannequin. And if I dribble into this area here, you're looking to get higher up the field and you're looking to provide a good angle not a flat pass, but a ball that I can get into your left foot. Yes? In that position there. As this ball comes across the game channel now, you're looking to play on the outside shoulder of this mannequin here. Okay? So as that pass comes from there, you're looking to open up, and you're looking to my left foot. Because if you play it into my right foot, which way am I going? Okay? So you're going to play it into my left foot. You're in a wide position to start. As I take my touch now, I need to find you in there on the half turn because we're looking to score on that side. So ball goes in. Can we take a touch? Can we? Finish? We see it. So you've got two choices. It's either a ball out of your foot for a pass here or a dribble to find a holding midfielder on what we call a counter movement. Yes? Let's see it. Ready? Play. Good. Firm. 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 Choice. 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 Good. And now you see a different behavior from these players. Excellent. Excellent. Try not to get marked by the mannequin. Good. Goes across. Choice. Well done. Good. Adjust his run based on the cue. Love it. Hey, next ball's got to go, guys. Get ready with the next pass. Keeper. Well done. Drive. What, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Good. Good. Open up your body. Choice. Yes. 
across. Good. Looking to get in the gap. Side, gap on the weak side. Two touches to finish. One and two. Good. Back in. My assistant coach here could be watching the players in front. I could be watching the players back here and really focusing on the details of every pass, every single touch. Here we go. Here we go. Choice. Good. Across. Across. Next ball can go. Guys, speed up the reps. Okay. Good. Set. Well done. Good. Across. Here we go. Watch him for the cue. Watch him for the cue. Good. We're opening. So I would say now we could really start to talk about details and the movement of this player based on the pass that came across and the cue that he was giving. So we'll go. Perfect. Come with me. We'll start in a high position. And we're open and watching the game. So as he travels there, the ball gets played to this player. I'm watching his body language, and I'm noticing there that he's starting to get on the dribble. It means I need to come in here now. Yeah? Can you play it to my left foot? Can I look to take a touch? I know that he's on my outside shoulder, foot in the gap. Okay? So sharpen the movements up here. Ready? Play. Good. Watch him. Choice. Good. Good movement. Now we're across. Now we're across. Next ball ready. Good. Good. Under. One touch is fine. Good. Drive. Okay. Where are we? Good. Across. Across. Next one. Touch. Well done. Hold it there. Hold it there. All right. Third choice we're going to give now. Okay, so they've gotten the idea. They know where their movements need to be. So we're going to introduce a third option. Ball goes there. Yeah, right. He's driving forward. It's not on. I'm looking to find this angle here to receive it on my right foot. So the two choices I have is a pass or a dribble forward. If now to drive into this area here. You're going to fly. would have started in a high position. Now you're looking to check off the shoulder of that player to the inside. Come inside a bit. So now in that space there, across the density, as it's played, you're going to connect with him. So it's here. I'm dribbling, passing. There's a connection with this player. And now we're looking for you to come in between the lines. Just stay out of the way there, Connor. Perfect. And can you and finish on the goal. Johnny, these guys here have two touches to receive and play in. Does everyone see it? Okay, so if you dribble to the inside, this player here is going to open up the channel for him and come and collect it off his feet. Look there. Okay? Go back. Ready? Play. Good. He'll give you the cue. He'll give you the cue. There it is. Well done. And? Good. Can we make sure that the pass gets to his foot. Johnny, watch the technique here. Uh, choice. Cross. Can we get under it? Under. In the gap. Opposite side. Well done. Watch here now. Q. What's he want? Good. X. Cross. Can we look to finish? Good. Let's speed up the repetitions now. Goalkeepers, let's speed up the repetitions. Cross. Choice. Good decision. Good movement. Okay. And hold it there, keeper. Good. Hold it there. Okay. To finish off the technical phase, we're going to introduce an element of competition between the two teams. Johnny. You're going to watch now, count the points. You get one point for a quality repetition with the correct cues, the correct runs based on the decisions of these players. So you'll give them one point successful. If there's a breakdown or we run the wrong way, we don't count it. Okay? You get an additional point if you're able to pass into one of the small goals. We're going to run this for 90 seconds. Johnny, yeah? 90 seconds, green versus orange. Ready, play. 
So because we've introduced this element of competition now, the attention to detail for the players is higher. We want to make sure that every rep is exactly what we want. So in a situation like this, where the ball bobbles or it gets caught up in the feet, we don't count the repetition, okay? We're going to start again, just so we set a high standard here of what we're looking for, okay? If it breaks down, we don't count it. Ready? Play. Concentration levels. Good. Choice. Well done. Excellent. Good pass. We want a firm pass, yeah? Well done. This is very good, guys. Keep going. Choice. Choice. Yeah. Touch. Choice. Yes. Watch the quality, Johnny. Watch the quality. Good. Well done. Choice. Good. Good one. Won't count it. Greens. Won't count it. Orange. Play. Won't count it. Oh. Good. Other side. Good. Passes along the ground. Strike through the ball. Yeah. Good. Good. How much time, Johnny? Ten seconds. Okay. Okay. Play. Won't accept it. Can you win it, Green? Okay. No good. Good. And we stop there. Score. Two nothing for Orange. Okay, again, we set a very high standard of what we're looking for. Players must execute. We'll take the mannequins off. We'll bring that big goal up to the six yard line, please. Okay. Good. So we'll finish off with a tactical situation. Now, again, still on the same principle of playing across the direct game channel. And I want you to imagine a camera above the field that's taking a snapshot of a very specific area and working with a set number of players on a specific area of the field. What we don't want in this phase of the training is a game that goes back and forth to what we saw at the beginning. We don't want transitions back and forth between teams. We need to be capitalizing on a moment of the game here. We're going to give one transition for the defending team if they win it, they have seven seconds to go the opposite way. Once that's done, we reset, we slow it down, and we start again from the goalkeeper. Here we really need to see the teacher come out, and again, my ability to use rules and constraints to manipulate the behaviors that we're looking for. Okay? Let's get them in their spots, John. So we're dividing the field into three zones. We're using the flat markers. So zone one is from this marker to the goal line. Zone 2 is from the flat marker to the other flat marker here. And zone 3 from the flat marker to the end line there. Okay? We want to set up a situation here where the goalkeeper starts the action. And we're creating a 2 versus 1 scenario in zone 1. Okay? You're the defender. Your starting position is going to be in between these two. Here, okay? Your job is to try to defend in zone 1 to try to recover the ball to score. Yeah? You cannot drop into zone two, which means you can't be here. Okay, your defending is done in here. You win it, you score. At any time, if green wins possession of the ball, you guys have seven seconds to score. You guys can go anywhere if that happens. You can drop in only if the green team wins possession. Okay? Goalkeeper has a choice. You can play this player or that player. You decide what you want to do. Play. Good. So the objective for you is to try to get yourself into zone two. Come on. So we get into zone two, and now what we're looking to do is try to create a three versus two scenario in the final zone. So as an example, right? If he would get it, Connor, you would jump in. Perfect. And we would have one player from zone two, a defender, get in here to create three versus two. We understand? And you've got seven seconds to score here, the orange team. Greens, if you win it, we go the other way. Simple. Okay, we'll start there. And we'll try to build up this scenario here. Tactical situation. We're 
You ready? Seven. Okay, that's the idea. Reset your positions. Reset your positions. So your starting position in between the cones. Yes, two versus one here. Two versus one there. Good. Play on. You have seven seconds. So it broke down. We did not capitalize on the moment that we're looking for, which means we come here. Now I got to start doing some coaching. In this case, we're talking about teaching now. Come, everybody back into their spots. Stay here. So I'm going to speak to the two players on the outside. I'm going to be you for a second, okay? Your choice is to play either one of these players. Now, based on the movement that I show you, there's one of two things that are going to happen. I'm going to show you what those options are, okay? Ball gets played to this player here. If I start to come here and press you like this, what are you going to do? You're going to dribble into zone two. It would make sense, yes? Go back. If this player, the same would go for you on the opposite side, yeah? We'll, we'll demonstrate over here. If this decides that he's going to come here and block the direct game channel, where would you play the ball? So he's pointing to the goalkeeper. I'll ask you, is there a better option than playing to the keeper? Okay. And if you play to the opposite side, go. What we've created here is a time edge for this player to now get into zone two, okay? Do you guys understand your options back here? You've got two choices, okay? Let's see what you do based on the movement of this player now. Ready? Play. Good. And? Not bad. Not bad. Hey, what's your name? Mike? Michael, your idea is very good. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Performance criteria. Now, I need to use a rule or a scoring system that I'm going to put in to influence behaviors now. Okay. So if you receive this ball here, good, and you're able to pass directly into zone three from here, yeah, go ahead. You're able to connect the pass with a player in zone three. That's going to be worth one point for the orange team if they're able to do this, okay? So indirectly here, I'm speaking to these two defenders in the second zone. So let's see now. Ball goes back here. Perfect. When the ball is here, you're going to provide the width on this side. My view is, how are you going to stop this from happening? So what this player is doing, which is the correct thing to do defensively, is to block the direct game channel. The direct game channel represents the fastest path, the ball to this player. He's done that very well, okay? If this player decides that he's going to come here, I want you to step out, and I want you to come into the gap. Can you come into the gap here? Okay. And let's see what this looks like now. If this player here also receives the ball from you, it's going to be worth one point. My question for you, if you're defending, is where would you stand in order to stop that from happening? Okay. So look at the conditions that we've created here, just based on these rules that we've implemented. Defender's behavior now is to create density here. My question for the player on the ball, and you did it very well before, is where is the free player now? Perfect. And we saw the movement of Connor to step out this way. Now if you're able to play the ball away from the density or across a game channel, we've got the time edge that we need, and we need to get into zone three as quickly as possible to score. Do we see it? Okay, let's go back to the keeper. Let's see what this looks like. Ready? Point. Okay, so like I said before, we don't want this turning into a game. So we weren't able to capitalize. We go back quickly. In your positions, guys. Quick. Go. In between the cones to start. Play. What's on? Good. Go back. Go back. Go back. So player gets on the ball here. And again, it's all about behaviors and habits, right? So we're watching the behavior of the player 
in the middle, so the second zone right now. Play the ball back this way. And we have to understand how to use the constraints or the rules in the game in our favor. So we want to tip the balance of power again. Give us a little bit more width as you did. That's perfect, okay? You went to press here. Go ahead, go and press. What did you do? So he played the ball across this way. If I'm the player in the middle now, based on the constraint that these two have, show us what you're going to do. How many points if he gets it there? It's one. So these players are looking to come across. The last thing we want, player, to continue to come into the density here to create this type of situation. Right? Play the ball back. Watch me, okay? You guys this is where you need to be here because the ball is there. Perfect. Your decision was what? Go. Play what your decision was. Good. The constraint for these guys? Perfect. And can you find this pass here? Okay. That's the one we're looking for, and now we look to create the situation here. Here we go. Ready? Hey. Good. Try to win it. Try to win it. Try to win it. Get across. Play. And, and, and. Good. Reset. We have to keep the ball on the ground, guys, okay? So no aerial balls. We're trying to play through. Reset. Ready? Play. Good. What do you see? And? Good. Okay. Can you finish? Seven. Good. Good. Reset. 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 Good. Wait till everyone's ready. And play. Good. Well done, Connor. Okay. Play on. Play seven. Okay, set up again. We're going to give another option now for the players so they can start to see different pictures. Get into your positions quickly. Reset. Perfect. Let's say the ball goes out here. We look to press. We're stopping them from playing. The ball gets shifted this way. Good. What's the reaction in the middle? Great. Now the reaction between the two of you can change, okay? And this is where we need to have verbal communication. If this player decides that he's going to come into the gap, so he's going to show us this decision here if he sees this picture. And we're trying to get the ball into him if we can, right? If this player decides that he is in the gap, right, where might you consider, okay, and we're going to allow you to come into zone two, which means now the weak side player is looking to find this area here, come on, and if we can get it into the right foot and step in here immediately, we're looking three versus two, but we need to be watching now what we're doing in the middle, yeah, okay, ready, play, Well done. Well done. Good. Okay, moment's on. Reset quickly. Good. And hold it there, keeper. Okay. The other thing that I can do, in, as far as a constraint is concerned, is I can divide zone two in half by using this dot here as a reference and simply say, if the ball is here, right, we know what the scoring system is. If you get it there, it's a point, so he's naturally going to shift. This player here must be on this half of the playing area, just like what we did with the discovery game, the same idea. If they shift the ball to the opposite side, your constraint is that you need to be on this side of the dot because we want the density created here. Now, the decision for you, based on what you just saw in the last movement there, this player has a decision to make. 
Okay? He's either going to try to cover here because it's worth one point. But if you see this player leaning this way because he's watching you now playing across the density, where are you going to play? You're going to look to play it in here maybe. Yeah? And maybe you him and you guys go. So think about what the movements of these players are going to look like now and you make the best decision. Okay? Go back. Ready? Play. Good. Good. It's on. Yes, yes. Play, play, play. Can you? Keep it on the ground. Okay. It's a good sequence, guys. Come on back. Come on back. There. So for the coaches that are watching, right, the action that we're trying to set up here is not a random action, okay? In this tactical phase, we should see the same action try to repeat itself with a slight variation of players, either in the gap or wide. But it's the same sequence and moment of the game that we're trying to capitalize on here. There's nothing random about this. This is very intentional, very purposeful. Play. Good. Good. What's on? There he is. Yes. Go. Balls out. Okay. We'll finish off here, and again, just like we did with the technical, we introduce an element of competition here between the two teams. But for this particular segment of the training, tactical situation, it's a set number of balls, okay, repetitions that you get. You only get five, which means the team in possession has to take the ball. We don't want to waste opportunities with poor technique, balls out of bounds, right? The objective is to advance through the zones, to get to the goal. You only have five. So it's orange versus green. Green, you win it, you go the other way. Simple. Questions? First ball, play. Okay. Okay, first rep is done. Reset your questions. Hold it, hold it. Start in between, start in between the cones. Ready, play. Second rep. Try to win it here. There he is. Well done. Point. And. Oui. We got a point, though, Johnny. We're keeping track of the score. That was a point for the orange team for finding the player in the gap to go forward. Very well done. Good. Here we go. What do you see? Okay. Take your time. We don't need to rush this. Wait till everyone's in their spot. Drop. You need to drop in here. And play. Good. Good. Yeah. Get in. Good ball. Yes. Play. Good. You notice the, the defenders here? So again, this is making sure we're enforcing the rules. There were three defenders in the third zone, right? Something for the assistant coach maybe to watch. We wanted a three versus two scenario. Once that becomes easy, then we can add the third defender. So right now, only one of you guys can drop in there, not both, not both. We want to see if the attacking team can take advantage of the time edge, okay? Like we spoke about before. We'll give two more reps. We'll count that one. Two more. Play. Good. Try to stop them from playing. All done. Okay, good defender. So, hey, this is your last chance. Orange, this is your last chance. Let's make it good. Hey. Good ball. What's on? Play. Good. So there we saw two players that were in the same space or on the same line. Both of them tried to go wide, which means we needed a player in the gap. This is something as a coach you would stop, you would get in, and you would start correcting in a kinesthetic way by moving players into the positions where they need to be. So in that case, I would have said, because that player is there, you need to be coming in here and making sure that you're playing between the lines. You guys want one more chance? Huh? 
You think you can do it? One more chance for orange. Let's see what comes of it. Ready? What's on? Okay, point. And stop there. Okay. How about a round of applause for these players from London TFC? Great job, guys. That's our session on playing across the direct game channel. I'll be doing a classroom session at 445 and going through all of the principles of play that we have at Toronto FC Academy. Thanks very much, coaches. Appreciate your time.